2017 Canadian National Ball Hockey Championships from Harbor Station in St. John, New Brunswick. My name is Keith Rains, and I'm joined in the booth tonight with Brian Fisher, who's doing the camera work and production. And in this, this evening's marquee matchup, we have St. John Most Wanted. They are in the white uniforms, going from left to right on your screen, taking on the ever powerful Brampton Midnight <coughs> Express in the red and black. Brampton, always a very powerful program coming out of the Ontario region. So uh, St. John definitely will have their hands pulled tonight, but uh, they're up for the challenge. And yeah, they got a fast break here. Matt Morehouse in the corner there. Fitzgerald gets it in. Nice spinorama move there by Riley Kraft. Good pass, oh! Here's and Andrew Stewart in front of the net there, almost deflected that one, had a great opportunity. And it's, it's really interesting when you watch uh, see some of the shots and they're almost coming from center ice sometimes that they feel they got a good line to get it in on net and maybe a rebound or a deflection. Balls popped out and let's try St. John again. Puck. Bounce and a nice save by Dave. I'm trying to read their writing here, folks. So uh, they, they gave me a list of their names and some of uh, the printing is, let's just say, not the best. So if I butcher the name now, I want to apologize for the folks back in Brampton. But I think it's Dave Dig, uh, Dig Around Remo from what I can make out uh, on the printing here that they, uh, the team gave us. But I know it's Dave. <laughs> the other goaltender's Dan, so. And here comes St. John again, fast in there. This is a fast-paced game. The, the periods are two 20-minute periods in total. If the game is tied at the end of regulation, they'll play a five-minute overtime of four-on-four four hockey. St. John keeps it in. Oh, try to get that through there. That was that uh, Matt Morehouse trying to th thread that pass through to a streaking uh, Matt Burns. There's a bucket. Oh, just missed by Burns on the backhand. Slap shot from the point. That just goes wide. That was uh, Jared Fitzgerald with a big uh, slapper from the point that just failed to negotiate contact with the net. Comes the Express. Big John, two on one. Morehouse, oh, with a nice pass and a great save by Brampton there on a beautiful setup by Matt Burns. Great 
Great scoring opportunity for St. John early. A lot of speed out there tonight, folks. And they do, St. John realizes they have to get on the Express quickly and not give them a chance to get, uh, get their passing game and, and get going in any way. They want to be right on them. And they have done that earlier on here. Off one by St. John. It's chopped out into the player's bench. Matt Tra Treblant is taking the face off for Branton. Shot gets in, deflected over the top of the net. Good help. 16 going in the corner there. That's uh, Chris Boyce. And away comes Treblon. There's a pass, but it bounces over Tremblant. And back comes St. John again. Tom McHugh, 22 there. Ow! Oh, and that's, I don't know, that was a slash or he went over in his ankle. Craft, head coach, Bobby Craft, assistant, Rufy McGuire, and Mike McHugh, team manager, Jordan Craft, and equipment manager, Mason Lloyd. For the St. John team, and uh, I don't know if it, I mean, he was grabbing his ankle there, it's the right ankle. And I know they'll be able to maybe just tape that up in more of a stinger, hopefully. I don't know if he went over on it or if he was slashed on it, but he's going right to uh, the dressing room. They're going to take a look at it and uh, maybe something can, can be taped up. And uh, we'll have to keep an eye on, on him. Uh, that was Matt Burns. Matt Burns, I think it was uh, Riley Kraft, 19. Because uh, Burns is on the bench, so it wasn't him. There's a shot that over the top of the net. And uh, St. John is definitely carrying the play here earlier on in this game. And there's a, a dangerous puck a ball that bounces from behind the net off the boards and comes right back out front. A goalie's nightmare. St. John is four shots to one, but they've had other shots uh, buzzing all around the Brampton cage. Up to this juncture of the game, 14-29 left. And a quick whistle here. They're gonna, players weren't in the right position. Nice little crowd here uh, watching the, uh, the St. John boys.
Here's a nice pass getting out for Brampton. Here's a good rush. Here comes Brampton again. Scored on a screenshot, and that has got to be a little disheartening uh, for the St. John boys after basically controlling the play for the first six and a half minutes. But a screenshot high uh, on that right faceoff circle beats Reardon. St. John again. Oh, just misses. The outside of the post. And back in again they go. Shot high. Oh, nice glove. By Digaroni. That's right. Anthony Loveless with the goal. Nice high shot, got the top corner. There's another, there's a goal! Right back, and that is really important for the St. John boys to answer it quickly back. And again, it's one of those shots that goes off the boards and comes right back out in front. And St. John was able to get it in the net. Tied up here at one apiece. 13-22 left to go here in the first period. And we've had a couple of goals scored. Here's Reardon, and he's just gonna hold on to it. JC Gill taking the face off for Branton. Crossing with the assist. Here's a nice run. Oh! Just poked away at the last second by Reardon. That's an interference play. He lost the, the Branton player lost the ball. And then he continued and he took out the St. John player as his teammate was going to play the ball. So. Interference, and he's explained that to the, uh, I think the assistant captain of the uh, Brampton team. And no argument there. He gets it. So St. John goes to a power play. And the referee tossing them both out. Here comes a, a, big, a big player, Sean Hannon. That's 
J.K. Gill with the penalty, two minutes for interference. So St. John goes to a power play. Tough to get that uh, ball in there. Fitzgerald was trying to thread the needle. He'll try it again. This time he gets it in. Oh, geez, he had two players open on his right side, and he passed it to the left. And here's a two on one. Whoa, that's a dangerous play. And there's going to be a penalty here to St. John. Goaltender's out for uh, Brampton. Get it behind the net to get the right players that they want on the, on the floor. That was touched by St. John, stops the play. Going off Tom McHugh for St. John. Okay, they've, they're having a little fun with the clock here. They got number 11. There they go. Got it on the right side. Is Frankie having anything to do with that score clock too, or just the, just the microphone? Hopefully just the microphone, that's enough. <laughs> so we've got a little four and four action here for a few minutes. Well, actually 22 more seconds. And then uh, Brampton will go to a power play. They're just waiting to, uh, he comes out of the penalty box and there he goes. Now it's five on four, power play Brampton. Here comes the express. St. John clears it down, minute six left in the power play. Here's Gill, nice save by Reardon. Gill has it again though, behind the net. And St. John gets it out, that's number four. Dave Crosman gets that ball out. 43 seconds to go in the power play for Brampton. Oh, a nice setup. And Reardon gets part of it with his blocker, deflecting it off in the corner. There's a shot deflected in. Back to the point. Moving it around, big shot, blocked. Penley is over. Good four checking there by Gill. Gets it out in front. And that's uh, flooring. Brian Fisher doing a great job on camera. <laughs> We've only been here since about nine o'clock this morning, Brian. We're doing all right. 
still keeping our sanity. Somewhat. Eight oh seven to go here in the first frame. One one is the score. Brampton scored at six seventeen of the first, and St. John responded quickly back at six thirty eight to tie this up at one apiece. Shots on goal, Brampton seven, St. John most one at six. Johnny Jarvis. Johnny's playing on both teams, you know. He is playing on the Masters squad too. Jarvis. He's silly that way. He's in condition. <laughs> he loves his hockey. Whether it be on skates. And he's in Goes a two on one for St. John. Oh, just behind. That was Matt Burns with the ball. Made a pass, but behind his teammate, Andrew Lagan. Lagan. Oh. One a shot in there. But they waited too long and. Uh, Shot got deflected up into the mesh. Six minutes and 40 seconds go here in the first period. And we have a penalty to the big man, Matt Tremblatt. He's big without shoulder pads on. over the net by Loveless. He has scored the goal for uh, Brampton tonight so far. Anthony Loveless, 94, and here comes St. John. Hope checked at the line. That's Sofa with a nice poke check, 15 for uh, Brampton. Okay, they got it over. They've got a minute left on the power play. There's a shot, goes wide of the net. Off the mesh, Loveless clears it down the, the floor. And there's one that flex right in front. Oh! Two seconds left to go in the man advantage for St. John. Way they go, deflected in. First on is Jason Gill, though. 
Comes back to the point. Nice feet across. Badger, 81 there at the point for a nice shot there. And a better save. That was by Matt Bercy. There's in front. Oh, a nice blocker save again. St. John moving the ball around well. Gets a shot, does not get through. Two seconds left to go in the man advantage. Seventy-one's going in the penalty box. Matt Bercy for tripping. He dove after the ball, and uh, I guess in the referee's mind, he didn't touch it, and he took out the Brampton player. So it, with 4:36 left, Setting up their offense now. Tremblant here back. Gets off to the side there. Hand it. Oh, a nice save. And a beautiful feed. Sean Hannon with that nice pass into the slot area. And Sofa. I think that was him. Uh, just double check that number. Back on the, on the face off. Branton wins it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hannon and uh, Reardon got a piece of that with his blocker. There's another shot in, and St. John clears it. Seconds left to go in the power play, but way comes St. John. Nice pass up there. Oh, just a little out of the reach, but trying to cut back in. Back, it scores! What a beautiful set of hands there by Scott Fenwick to take that pass in his feet. That was fed out by Lang Langan and able to deposit that in the top shelf. Wow. What a nice set of hands there and quickness. And that's a shorthanded goal, folks. At 17.04. Oh, nice defensive play there by Crossman. And St. John gets rid of it down the ice. And that should take care of the penalty. Back at full strength. Most wanted short-handed goals scored by number 41, Scott Fenway. Chris Boyce also gets an assist on the play. But it was uh, Langan with the beautiful pass. Uh, it was, like I said, in Scott's feet a bit, but his quick hands got it up to a stick and all in one motion in the net. 
to give St. John a 2-1 lead here with 2.22 left to go in the first. Quickly gets back out, and here comes St. John again. But quickly on it. There's a 67 out there, and he's not on my program. So I apologize. And here comes another penalty, and that's something St. John does not need. After working hard to uh, get this lead here is having uh, some unwanted penalty. Thirty-five seconds. Uh, Branton's got the goalie out. Seventy-one is getting the penalty for St. John. Matt Percy. Be sure to follow TV One Atlantic on social media. You can join the conversation at TV One underscore Atlantic on Twitter and Instagram, and TV One Atlantic on Facebook. Vibe TV One, powered by Bell Alliance. Twenty-six seconds left to go here in the first frame in the very entertaining first period. And, wow, four minute penalty. That hurts. That really hurts. Mercy, four minutes. So, uh, St. John is gonna be under siege here. And, uh, Troy Reardon is going to be called upon to come up with some big saves. Oh, that just goes over the top. Sean Hanna is a very nice playmaker. Big man has uh, good hands, moves the ball around well, and uh, he always he's looking, always looking for the open man. Won that face off clean. 14 seconds left. Another shot goes wide. And that's going to do it for the first period. Shots on goal at the end of one. Express 14. St. John most won at nine. We'll take a short break and be back for more exciting action here from Harbor Station in St. John, New Brunswick at the 2017 National Ball Hockey Championship.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Harbor Station in beautiful St. John, New Brunswick, by the Bay of Funday. And we've got second period action going on here. And Brampton is on a, they got three minutes and 22 seconds left on their power play as St. John took a penalty late in that first period. Shots on goal in the first period, 14-9 for Brampton. But uh, St. John holds the 2-1 lead. It's a nice play in there, but whoa! And there comes another penalty, and boy, that just makes, uh, that will give Coach Kraft a gray hairs for sure. And just a pen away from 200 feet from your own net, and when you're killing a penalty, and you can't be doing that. And that's Chris Boyce going off. Now it's a two-man advantage. And that's going to be for a full two minutes because uh, Burns has uh, 2.51 left on his penalty. So here's a glorious opportunity for the Express to tie this match up. If you get a chance, folks, join TV1 Scott Squires and CTV Cyril Lenny on Sideline Scoop each Monday at 8.40 a.m. Atlantic, 9.10 a.m. Newfoundland. Get up to date on Bell Line 5 TV1's local sports coverage with Scott and Cyril. That's Sideline Scoop Mondays only on CTV Morning Live Atlantic. And here is a critical juncture of this game for St. John as they try their best to thwart this uh, offensive juggernaut of Brampton as they're a five on three. And there's the first block. It's loose in front over the top of the net. And St. John clears it down. Two more players come on. Oh, goes through. Oh, a block shot. It's loose in front again. And it's swept away. Oh, a nice defense and clear. That was 17, Jared Hicks. Hannon, Hannon's very good passer for uh, Branson. Here he is on the wing, gets it back. They load up and that's blocked. There's a block shot. St. John players without a stick. Score, finally, number 94, Anthony Loveless. That's his second goal of the game. St. John has a little bit to complain about there as uh, they felt their uh, Player sick was held there, and Mr. Jarvis is informing the official of that. We can't be holding our player sick, especially when we're down five on three. And the referee's probably saying, you gotta hold on to your stick a little solid, son. Loveless scored that. Not much of a chance for Reardon there. 41 seconds left on the last penalty, the St. John. But uh, it's the St. John's own, own undoing here, getting these penalties. After they worked very hard to have that 2-1 lead, and they start off this second period down a man, and then they got another penalty, and that was just a little too much for them to handle.
But the defense was doing well. They're blocking a lot of shots. But uh, when you're down 5-3 five, 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 and your third man has, doesn't have a stick, makes it tough. Fourteen seconds left to go in the man advantage. And that's it. Penalty's over. Players back in play here. Now St. John has got to get back on the horse again and get some balls down deep in the Brampton in. Oh, there's a shot that just goes wide at J.C. Gill. Oh! Reardon gets a piece of that one. Nice block uh, coming out from behind the net. Reardon's stick. J.C. Gill is fast, number 96 for uh, the Express. Nice stick by 81, Badger. Sofa with, gets it around. Kept in by Badger. Going to the backhand. Back to the point. To, that was Johnny Jarvis there. Here's Gill. left here. Shots on goal, 18 to 12 for the Express. Yeah, St. John's got to get the momentum back on their side. When you're killing penalties like that, after a while you get on your heels too much. Nice save by Reardon, came right out and challenged that shot by J.K. Uh, Gill. a nice move. It's a shot on, deflected off into the corner there by the defense. Oh, a beautiful save by Reardon. Came out and challenged Gill on that shot. It's loose in front. Thirteen fifty two left. It's two two, folks. It's, it's getting a little intense out there. Oh, there's a tricky play, but here comes St. John. It's Langdon. By the way, comes the Express again. Nice stick there. Saunders tries to feed in front. Langan, and that's deflected high. It's 
Steve Powers in the house. Steve Power, nice to have you in the house. Good to be here. Can you hear me all right now? I think we got oh, it. Oh, there now, we, here go. we go. Hey. Good one, good one going here tonight. Yes, we do. Battle for second place in their division on the line here. Winner gets second, loser gets third. Okay. And I don't know if either team really knows that. <laughs> well, oh, they know it, but I don't know if they particularly care. Now, in that, that previous game, it was 2 2, and they hauled the goaltender. Was that. Uh, was yeah, that the, a the Edmonton team had to win in regulation. Okay, that's uh, what we thought. Any, if, if the Alberta, sorry, if the BC team got any point, it locked up first place for them. So okay. it didn't matter. They were first and second. Yep. All right. Well, here we are. We've got 2-2 in the second period with 12 minutes and 40 seconds left. Uh, St. John has been a little on their heels with that four-minute uh, power play, and then they get two man down. And, of course, after you kill some penalties, you start playing back, and, uh, and Brampton is coming on. And you can't uh, discount the fact the most wanted probably lost their best player. Their best forward for sure in Riley Kraft. He went down with that ankle yes. injury early yeah, in the game. Yeah, that was a shame. I spoke to Riley down in the dressing room here, and it don't look good. I I gotta be really. I'd be shocked if he's not done. What did he just roll it? Did he? He rolled it pretty bad. Yeah. I know Riley last year in this event did the same thing ah. out against Newfoundland squad BC. So are you telling me those ankles aren't taped before the game? Is that what you're telling me, Steve? Do it, but I mean, it's a tough game. This yep. ball hockey, it's uh, not for the faint of heart. No, you see a lot of body contact going on down there, obviously, and some of it's called, a lot of it isn't. Yeah, and this Brampton team here, Keith, uh, got another penalty coming up here. St. John have been playing very, very well, but they're not good enough to be in the penalty box all the time. No, no, that you can't be given. Uh, this Brampton team, uh, power play opportunities, one after another. But that's what pressure does, right? If you're always if you're always in your defensive zone all the time, sooner or later, you're gonna get called for uh, something and uh, that was, has happened here in this second period. And what you're seeing here too is this Brampton team is getting a little better all week. In fact, today they picked up Brian Sloga in their lineup. He, he played defense for Team Canada over the World Championships in Paradibite. He was actually named the tournament all-star team. And that's uh, number 98. Yep, uh, tomorrow, for... they're going to be bringing in Cal Wild, who was the captain of Team Canada at that event. <laughs> and they've also got a forward on the way, Marcel Malay. So that Midnight Express team, I think, for from where I sit, they might be the team to beat in this tournament. Okay. And that's not to discredit Newfoundland Black Horse or anybody else. No. But you're adding players of that caliber. Yeah. You gotta watch out. And that's uh, that makes it good. To, I mean, obviously, when you're playing against, you know, you're playing against the best. Absolutely. Wow. I mean, that that's what you want. And uh, like I said, this St. John team is uh, kudos to them. Yeah, they're down uh, 22 to 12 in the shot category now, but a lot of that has to do with uh, they've been uh, in the penalty box a lot of this second period. This is the best showing for a New Brunswick team at this event in quite some time. And all these guys are pretty, most of them are local. I, I believe the St. Yep. John team is 100%. Yep. Actually, Keith, in this tournament this year, the way the rules work, uh, New Brunswick and Saskatchewan are what they consider to be C provinces. Yeah. They're allowed to pick up five players okay. from anywhere. Um, Newfoundland, BC, Alberta, Manitoba, all considered B provinces. They're allowed three. Okay, yeah. And the only province today is Quebec aren't here, unfortunately, and yeah. Ontario. They, yeah. they, can only, they can still pick up, but it has to be yeah. within their province. Yeah. 
Um, not a lot of teams with a lot of pickups. Like you say, yeah. New Brunswick could have a lot. They don't have any. Yeah. I know the Newfoundland Black Horse picked up one. Yeah. Um, so really, here's a big chance. Yep. Here it comes. Battling away at it. I'm surprised Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. I, I don't. Uh, really hasn't been a part of it in a long time. I yeah. know the Canadian Ball Hockey Association. We're going to start really working hard on Nova Scotia. I know there's a lot of good hockey players over. Yeah. I mean, let's call a spade a spade in Atlantic Canada and ice hockey. Nova Scotia, frankly, dominates. Yeah. Yes. I know New Brunswick is Midget, probably uh, close Midget, behind. Midget, Bantam, yeah. I mean, they have excellent programs down there. Absolutely. So ball hockey is just something not catching on yet, yeah. but it will. And, um, you, and you know what I'm surprised with, too? I, I mean, I know there's a lot of ball stuff going on in PEI. There's a lot of good little little hockey players over in PEI, and that's like I, I know a lot of the guys that play ball hockey here, and most of them are hockey players, and they, the reason we play ball hockey keeps us in great shape over yep. the summertime. Fantastic crossover training sport for sure. This and probably lacrosse might be the best team yep. for ice hockey players. But uh, now what's your role with uh, – Ball Hockey Canada, Steve. I'm actually the president of the Canadian Ball Hockey Association. And, and now how many years have you been? Uh, this is, I have just finished my first full year, so I'm going into year two. Okay. We uh, had our annual general meeting here in St. John just before this tournament started. A few new board positions came up for election, but mostly status quo. I know this year is a, what we call a scouting year for our junior teams, which just finished their nationals last weekend yes. in Kitchener, Ontario. And our Masters, we have our Masters here this week. Our, yep. The winner, the Masters is unique, Keith, because the winner of this tournament will actually gain a spot in the World Championships. Wow. And from the other five teams, we'll select Team Canada. Oh, great. That is really good. And and you, and there was an event in Newfoundland uh, a few weeks ago. Was that the club championship? That was the club championships, yes. Yeah. And now there are players here playing on these provincial teams that played in that club championship yep. with their own team. and. Interesting you bring that up because we made a rule change this year at Canadian Ball Hockey. That's not going to happen again. So if you're playing at this event in the A-level event, yeah. if you play with a club team back home, you've forfeited your right to play with the club team in the B, C, or D Nationals okay. if you're playing A. The only yeah, exception is going to be if you're 40 years old or old, 40 you, you years old. Can't, you can go up, but you can't go down. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and we've done that in volleyball too, the same thing. Where we had club teams, you had B, had B teams and A teams and stuff. Said, well, hey, you want to play in the A? Great. You can't go down and play B two weeks later. <laughs> it's, it's a, you know, I know it's frustrating to some teams from uh, outside, but and I'll, I can speak just from a Newfoundland perspective. There's only, I believe, maybe 11 teams in the entire province. Yeah. So when they come up and you play a province to mention Alberta, there might be 60. Yeah. Or 70 teams. Yeah. Ontario could have 100 teams. I yeah. mean, you might say it's not a fair playing field to see these A guys playing there, but I, I guess someone could argue if you've got 6,000 players yeah. to pick from as opposed to 300. Yeah, for sure. And that's where St. John is, too. You, you'll see guys probably playing in this team could play with a club team in an event. Yep. But it is something Canadian ball hockey's looking at, and we're trying to make the events accessible and fun for everybody. We want to make sure it's a good experience. Uh, we were really happy with our events this year, the event in St. John's. People seem yeah. to enjoy. The Kitchener event was fabulous. Here's um, the nice. Go ahead. Yeah, here's a nice play in front. Uh, just getting back, it's 2-2. And with 9.20 left here, and St. John is starting to press again. And Johnny Jarvis with the shot. Oh, a nice save there. Just goes off the corner. And out of play. But yeah, okay, continue on. Um, our events were really successful. We made another change actually at this AGM based on what's happened in our events this year and it's in this tournament now. We used to have, this is the only tournament we have overtime in the round robin. Every other tournament just ends in a tie. Okay. But in the quarterfinals, it used to be we would play five, uh, 10 minutes of five on five and go to a shootout. Yeah. We've changed that now to 10 minutes of four on four and then go to a shootout. Okay. And for the final games, the championship games, it'll be 10 minutes of four on four, followed by 10 minutes of three on three. <laughs> it used to be just two five on five periods. But oh. We've had three of four national championships decided in shootouts. And I don't listen, like that. I hate it. Yep. I, I okay. don't mind saying I hate yep. it. I, 
we've listened to a lot of the teams and we've hit we've listened to the feedback and yep. that's a change that's been made and we're going to see it in this tournament hopefully and um see unless you're goes. a soccer player i don't think anybody oh. wants to win the shootout oh, no. for sure well we've got an exciting one here folks whoa that was cheeky yeah <laughs> that's H H hannon uh, net is off but hannon has a great set of hands that's sean Number 13, he's, he's rangy, a, and he puts the ball on the money. Sean Hannon's a former Team Canada player out of Ontario. Highly, highly skilled and highly competitive, too. He's pretty fiery. Yeah. But in that first period, he set up his teammates a few different times, and Reardon had to come up with some big saves. Reardon's been nothing short of outstanding <laughs> for St. John in this tournament so far. Oh, there's a shot, just grazes the outside of the post. Eight minutes and 35 seconds left here to go in the second period. If it's tied at the end of regulation, we'll play five minutes of four and four. And there's a nice pass out by Hannon. Banked it off the board there and sent his man in. It's number 11, J.K. Uh, J Gill. Here comes St. John, two on one. Oh, a nice poke check. That's where that long reach comes in handy, doesn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> really interesting, the longer this one gets tied, I know we've got overtime, winning team will get second place. Oh, there's a deflection over the top of the cage. But if it finishes tied, I wouldn't be able to tell you who gets second. That's <laughs> going to come down to goals for and against and possibly even penalty minutes. Wow. The, as it stands, the loser of this game will get to face the Ebon and Savages. Yes. And the winner will play, I believe, the New Tech Extreme out of Ontario. Okay. There's a the chance. Oh, two! St. John has just taken the lead. <coughs> you can see that one coming a mile away. They just <laughs> stuck with it, Keith, and that's a big thing in ball hockey. You can't let your momentum take you behind the net. And you saw the St. John player there. He just had a wide open cage to tap the rebound into. <coughs> wow, what an exciting. And it's a nice little crowd here tonight uh, cheering on the local boys. Absolutely, you can't even see the big crowd. The big crowd is down below us here. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's way more people on this side. Behind the, the players' bench. Yep. Incidental contact there. <laughs> that was a big incidental contact. Uh. Under Not a game for the faint of heart. Yeah, under seven minutes. And these guys are just... Oh, my That ball just bouncing right to St. John, and they put it in the cage again. A little confidence. That was a does, great huh? pass. That yeah. was a great pass to send him in alone, and he made no mistake <laughs> on that. Goaltender never had a chance. 13. I, I, you know, I'm. Langdon. I don't want to say Midnight are playing possum here, but I, I can guarantee you, I've seen this team play and. I know who they're missing. It's not their best game. Now they're trying to win and full yeah. full mark to St. John here. They are just coming. As you mentioned for a while, Reardon just kept them in there, but the most wanted right now, they look to be the better team easily. Yeah. Here's another chance. They stopped that uh, at 1240. Most wanted for the and set up the previous one uh, that Morehouse scored. And Matt Byrne. 
Give him a 4 2. I guarantee you, Keith, if Las Vegas had odds on ball hockey, <laughs> they would have been astronomical if someone was to tell you that the Midnight Express and Manitoba would finish third and fourth in their respective 14 division this week. The odds on that, someone could have made quite a pretty yeah. penny. This one's not over in that, oh, though, either. No, no. They can, they can fill the back of the net pretty quick here. Number 80. He's got the stick up in the face. Yep, and the referee saw that. Randy Kelly. Referees put up with no. That's I was teasing you about uh, Frankie. Frankie. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Frank, Frankie, for some reason, the last game didn't want to report on the last three goals or, or the misconduct penalties or anything. So yeah. we're trying to go. We trying to. We're trying to clarify. So okay, we want to make sure who scored that. So Frankie will let us know. No. <laughs> no, not a chance. No. He didn't. But the big crowd here, though, he wants to <laughs> get his voice over the air here now. Can't blame him. Well, he is entertainment for us. I just wonder now with 5.43 left, how how hard does St. John push here? Up by two? Yeah, they got a power play, but... You don't want to shorthand the goal. You don't need the score nope. anymore. Just don't need the score get, get the score against. I tell you what, I, I'd like to see New Brunswick ball hockey president Sheila Elliott in the stands here. If the most wanted could hold on to this one, it's the highest finish for a St. John team in a long time wow. and, that's and good. good for that. That's fantastic. Yeah. And one of the reasons I know when I hosted uh, uh, national uh, volleyball championships uh, university is you want to promote the sport. Oh, there's a just they just missed that on a play. And you people see it and think, yeah, I want to play that. I mean, we get some young kids in the, in the crowd here. And that's what it's all about because you want to have that funnel effect. You want to have more people playing. Well, this is a really big year for this most wanted team and a bigger year for ball hockey. Score! Nice pass from behind the net. Ah, and who would have thunk? Might, this one might be over now. I, I thought the Midnight yeah. could come back, but I don't know if they're going to put six goals in Troy Reardon. Yeah. I, I finished that thought, Keith. Yep. It's a big thing here for the most wanted in St. John and New Brunswick ball hockey. And something I don't know if you realize and people aren't talking about. New Brunswick is hosting the Junior National Ball Hockey Championships next year. So okay. they've got the big show here this year, next yeah. year to get the kids coming in. The kids event is actually a much bigger event than this. There's more teams. Well, more teams and mom and dad's come. Absolutely, <laughs> but I mean, what a boost. If the most wanted pull out a medal here in this year's event, yeah. you got to think that's going to help youth ball hockey yeah. in the province of New Brunswick. For sure. Most wanted. Percy and another nice uh, pass by Andrew Leg that he's been playing played well here. Scored a goal himself and set up a couple others. I think Andrew Lang might, might be one of the most underrated players in this entire tournament. Very Not many people outside of New Brunswick know who he is. Yeah, very intelligent player. Very intelligent player. Great ice hockey player, Andrew yeah. Langan. You see another ankle injury down there this time yeah. is the Express. Something to do with the well, Express, they just don't look interested to me. No, right they, now. they they were when it was 2 2, they were pushing it, pushing it, then all of a sudden St. John stopped getting the penalty and they 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 got a little bit of pressure and uh, got that goal and that sort of was uh, and then and you, you take your foot off the pedal for a minute and all of a sudden boom! It was another goal. Yeah, okay. I, I, Do we I really know. want to expel a Listen, lot of Listen, I tell you here? what, St. John Most Wanted, they've got to like a win here tonight because I, I think they would like a matchup much more against the Ontario team than the Evident Savages. Evident Savages defending bronze medal this, yeah. from this event. Uh, new Tech, a brand new team. First time in the Nationals for those guys, okay. but they've been getting a little better all yeah. week, so I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to the quarterfinal matches. Let's call it a spade a spade. This men's division's had three exhibition games for every team so oh, far. Oh, yeah. Everybody makes the playoffs. Yep. 
tomorrow's moving day and tomorrow we'll separate the men from the boys in this event. And I tell you now, mark my words, watch out for Manitoba. Okay. That's a fourth place team I would not want to play. Okay. And, you, and you've seen some teams, we, we watched some today and where they had like two four minute power plays and did nothing. Yeah. Did nothing with it. It happens. And it happens. And, and you know that's some of the things that they want to work on uh, going forward. And that's number 21, uh, Jason Gill. Uh, Trick is here, Keith, every team is a quality hockey club. I mean, you look at the Saskatoon Buffalo, who are going to finish fourth in their division. I believe their three games, two losses were by one goal. Yeah. And the other one, I think they gave up three power play goals. Like, I mean, they're there. Yeah. They're right there with those teams. It's not a case of someone's going to walk out and clobber somebody. There's number 17, uh, Riley Hicks. Four minutes and 15 seconds left to go here in the second period, the final period. Two 20 minute periods they play. Interesting to put a pedometer on these guys, see how much they, they run in a, in a game. I think it might blow up. Oh. Whoa. I think New Brunswick kind of get a penalty there yeah. for holding the stick. Yeah. Although. <laughs> the midnight player put his knee into the guy's yeah, back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Say, so, okay, he was holding my stick while you pushed him on the stick, first of all. And yeah. then you had his knee, your knee in his back. How's he going to give it to you? <laughs> i tell you what, though, Keith, if I'm calling that there, I would call New Brunswick for holding the yeah. stick. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's call, I call that game management with three minutes left in a three-goal right. hockey game. Exactly. I'd have offsetting liners there. Yeah. But then again, that's why I'm up here. I'm not a referee. <laughs> I'll leave that job to the professionals. Yeah, and you know what? We've had a lot of good officiating this, this week. They've, uh, there was a few games uh, that were chippy and they put a lid on it real quick. Well, they bring in the officials here, Keith, from all over the country. There are some local officials from the uh, New Brunswick area, probably three, but all rest, I believe there's 12 or 14 officials here and they come from Newfoundland to Vancouver. They're from yeah. all over. Yeah. Now, is there different rating systems? Uh, the There is a referee in chief for the event. It's Mr. Darsh Graywall from BC. Okay. Uh, he ranks the officials every game, and all the assignments are done randomly. Yep. But come quarterfinal day, yeah. uh, you'll probably notice there might be a couple of referees you don't see yep. anymore doing yep. games, and that's because they are ranked. The, the sure. referees have to advance just like the players. Well, and, and that's what I say. It's a great opportunity, not only for player development, but referee development, too. Two forty-eight here left to go. Minute 14 left to go in the man advantage. And there's a little frustration going on there. Hannon went a little, uh, little aggressively, let's say. Yeah. Hannon's fiery. Yeah, He's that. and uh, that's uh, that's more frustration than anything. But you like to see that out of your. Absolutely. Uh, hey, listen, I care. Hey, we're losing by three now. As yeah. long as it's nothing that is going to hurt anybody or garner no. a suspension, I have no problem with that whatsoever. No. But it just as you soon can tell as midnight have got it mailed in now. I'm yeah. looking down to uh, Matt Tremlett, probably you know. Maybe their best player. Matt Tremlett's probably one of the best players in Canada. I haven't seen him now in the last six, seven minutes, number 55. Oh, 55. He's, a, gee, he's got a big set of he's, shoulders on he's him. He's unbelievable. He's a fantastic hockey player. Yeah. Well, you got to play again tomorrow. Absolutely. Like, you know, hey. The one that counts is the more. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, you, you lose, you're done. Now, Grant, don't try to tell these guys from the most wanted that this nope. one doesn't count. This yeah. feels great to them. you got to believe that. And like you said, a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of things in sports is confidence, right? And that's them. 
Number 15, Sofa, in front of the net, uh, protecting his goaltender. I like him. He's a good defense. And St. John's going to get a penalty. Uh, I guess that's what I call like whacking at the goaltender. That's called you're up by three goals and there's only two minutes left, so we're going to put you in the box. Yeah. That's, what, that's what that's called. <laughs> that's what they call it in Newfoundland. Well, that's what it's called in the real world, too. That's I call it game management. If, on yeah. the official there. Got a four and three here now. A little bit more open floor. And that was number nine, uh, Rob Vincent getting a two minute minor for roughing. 148 left to go. St. John's just moving around, taking their time, no rush here. And nice save. David D. Geronimo. He's, put, he's probably in a little bit of a shooting gallery here in the last 10 minutes. Been playing very well. De Geronimo is a great goaltender. Well, now the shots are 26 25 for St. John. They were behind uh, in the shot category. They were down 14 9 after the first period. But uh, they were in a little bit of a penalty trouble for uh, part of that period and some of this. Now we've got 4 and 4 action. And 126 left to go here in the game. Well, Jason Gill's a long, lanky guy too, isn't he? Yeah, Jason's a, he's a pretty young guy too. Yeah. One of the younger players out there. Midnight's got a good mix. They've got a got a lot of young guys, but they've got some veteran leadership. Uh, Robert Chicky Mentis is out there. So now they these guys Some all these play guys for are, different teams uh, in, in Brampton, do they, um, get together for nationals? No, I believe this is a club team out oh, of Brampton. No, oh, they, have, they might have a couple of players picked up from other places in Ontario. Yeah. But for the most part, uh, Ontario has so many clubs. They yeah. have, this team actually won the right to come here last year. Okay. So it gives them a chance to raise some money to uh, yes. be able to afford to come to Nationals. Yep, that, makes, that's, that makes sense. And there's a bunch on that team pulling double duty, too. I think they've got three or four players that are playing Masters this week well, as well. That's it. Well, Johnny Jarvis is doing that for uh, Brunswick. Yeah. Because yep. Jarvis is a fitness machine anyhow. Yeah, Johnny Jarvis oh, could probably play 20 times a day. Yeah. <laughs> We're down to the last 13 seconds here. Just get it out. Get one more shot at it. Oh, a nice save by Reardon. And the final score, St. John won at five. Brampton Midnight Express two. He would have made a lot of money if he hadn't said that at the start of the game. So that'll set the playoff matchups in the men's division, Keith. Eventually, uh, this next game between Newfoundland and Manitoba uh, essentially becomes the friendship match. It really doesn't mean anything. So the Newfoundland Black Horse are going to tangle with the Saskatoon Buffalo, first versus fourth. Yeah. Second place will be the St. John Most Wanted. They're going to get the New Tech Extreme. And in the other division, the first place Vancouver Falcons will take on Manitoba, while the Edmonton Savages will tackle the Brampton Midnight Express. Those, now, are, those are going to be two good games. So just tell the folks at home uh, where they can uh, type into to get all the schedule, all the all the results. CBHA.com has got all the uh, results. It's got online statistics. I know the scorekeepers here are as goals are being scored. I believe they're uploaded. Okay. Um, all the tournament stats, statistics, the link to this webcast, it's all there on CBHA.com. They will go under tournaments and click on either the men's A, the women's, or the Masters, whichever tournament they're looking for statistics from. That's Anthony Loveless, got player of the game. He had uh, two two goals tonight for Branson and 81. Brad Badger, player of the game for St. John. So thank you very much. I guess you're doing the next one. I've so, got the 